and in this session they will take an in-depth look at the digital manufacturing case study. So I will hand over to the two of you and uh, a warm virtual welcome. Okay, thanks so much uh, Steve and the entire group to give us this opportunity to present today. So I know we have a very strict time, so we'll get started. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, Steve has already introduced us. So myself, Rajeshri Das, and I have my co-speaker Yashovatan with me today. And we also have Lucas Byrne from uh, one of our other colleagues uh, who has also worked very closely in this uh, case study. So keeping in mind this year's Open Group's digital theme, the digital first theme, we bring to you a case study of digital in practice in our manufacturing shop floor under the umbrella of digital manufacturing. So we'll share our experience today on how to architect a solution for a very collaborative visual quality application, leveraging the new age technology advancement in the area of computer vision. So computer vision is all about making computers see and interpret the world as we humans do. It leverages a lot of artificial intelligence and, intelligence and machine learning algorithms for processing this industrial images. And why the word collaborative vision here? Because it's not just about machine vision, but the emphasis is more on collaboration between human and machine and machine and machine communication to bring meaningful insights to the table. Okay. So with that context, we get started with our presentation for today. So while we have this, we have been hearing about Industry 4.0 for quite some time, but if you actually go on the manufacturing shop floor, we are still not there here. There. Uh, and even if we have done something, it's only partial achievement that we have done. And why is that so? It's because the over-increasing complexity in the production processes that has grown manifold over the years. Even if you want to do a digital transformation, it's a very difficult to do in our already existing brownfield installations. Plus, even if you want to integrate a new solution, to get them into existing production line, again, it's a very complex and time consuming. For example, if you want to even install a simple camera, it might take you weeks or months to do so. And of course, the final, the ever increasing pressure to significantly increase your production efficiency. And if you look at the today's time of the Corona world, it becomes even more evident and pertinent to how to make sure that our shop floors are quickly adaptable, are resilient to these changes and are very agile. And so how do we make sure that our plants is really agile and we react to things very fast? One of the very important measure to, to measure effectiveness of a plant is the OEE, which is the overall equipment effectiveness. This is one of the key KPIs to measure a plant's performance. And how do you calculate this? This is basically a product of availability multiplied by performance multiplied by quality. And while we have various solutions to address each of this area, for today's discussion, we'll mainly focus on adaptive quality control. So what do we mean by that when we talked about coming up with a, a collaborative visual quality application? We start with a simple example of setup, how it looks like in a real shop floor. So if you see here in a plant, there's an engine which is attached to an inspection element, and it and it's requires a visual trigger to automatically trigger a lot of automatic trigger capturing of images and screens that can be analyzed later. And if the bot and at the bottom you can see a conveyor belt from where the engine is actually transported, RFID readers attached to it, and all that information is passed on to the PLC gateway. On the right hand side, if you see the lot of equipments that you see attached on this plant shop floor. So it's not just about installing a camera, but it's about how do you attach it? What is the compute device that's going to uh, compute all the data that it captures? It's also about the PLC gateway, which is capturing all the information from the traditional conveyor belt. And this PLC gateway actually plays the important linkage here to marry the old way of collecting information and the new solution, this whole computer vision solution that we're going to deploy. and Take the, uh, take the data from both of the system and pass it on to the other system, business IT systems on the floor, which is for two purposes. Either you give the results back to the system to make some decisions, or you get some inputs and actions from the business IT systems to give it back to the, you know, to, to give it back on the shop floor. So this is about a small, this is about a small view of how this whole inspection case looks like. If we move on to the next slide. So while this seems to be okay, there was all this hardware involved and this whole integration, how it works fine, it doesn't end there. 
if you really want to take the solution to production there are a lot of other obstacles and challenges that we have to address so very first thing how quickly can you take it to production while we were successful in doing some of these things installing a camera training uh, training the whole solution uh, deploying the models in two days but still there is scope to improve it further if we can just install cameras capture all the images and do the process later so there's still a scope of further improving it plus how do you make sure your solution is global it's not influenced by local provider and local solution but truly global to make sense of it the other important challenge is how do you make sure your solution this computer vision solution is resilient to changes the same solution should work perfectly fine even in the uh, even if there's a change in the environment and process variations for example for the night shift workers when the when the, there's not in the flight is dark the same, the results should, should be the right for an for a worker to interpret so it's it's so it's very important that your solution is resilient to changes that's happening around you the next important point and this always been a concern even today on the assembly floor there about 90% factory workers who are doing lot of work and now introducing this system or computer system which can also take decisions for you it's it should it should be like more collaborative and working side by side i should not be a threat to the worker that tomorrow it will replace my job so how do you handle this delicacy is also very important and then finally the most important thing how do you design your solution to focus more on the anomalies abnormal scenarios rather than focusing on all kinds of errors that can happen so that you don't have to train a model for huge amount of errors and which could become quite tricky and complicated okay so how do you go about in the journey in a shop floor here okay so depending upon which phase um uh, in this whole industry for point to automation world that a manufacturing shop floor is we can start at different levels so if we start from the right hand side the very first level what you can do is okay so if a shop floor already has a camera attached but it's not performing to the optimum level there's lot of errors or slippage that's happening we can quickly integrate new algorithms to the existing solution do the analytics and make sure the performance is better than existing systems this is something that you can do very quickly second step is how go, how you can install new cameras at the new spot uh, especially where there is where there's more error prone quickly install that and start capturing all the images and do the analytics and the last part which is of more interest to us is all about collaborative vision how do you make sure you quickly analyze these images process it and if you see an anomaly or something that's not right you immediately inform the worker and the worker can actually take a quick decision then and there so it's about how early you can detect a problem before it goes downstream and there is some downtime involved so because we touched upon this word collaboration and this is also the title of our whole solution what do we mean by collaboration okay so this is a very delicate topic this is about human machine collaboration and we can think of it more in a psychological manner it's about pca cycle which is about perception cognition and action what this means is we as humans perceive the world we take lot of actions and cognition is something that is in between that does all the magic to comprehend all that's going around and this is and uh, and this humans have mastered over the years with our brains which has got experience knowledge and understanding in doing this how do we achieve the similar thing in machines and we have already done so computer vision has already had quite success there but the idea about here is how do we make sure this human and machines collaborate with each other we need to make sure that action of a machine fits well into a perception of human and vice versa an action of human can be perceived well by machine if they can handle this well seamlessly that can make our shop floors even more smarter and that's what we'll get into digital factories smart factories that's all all around the place okay so uh, now we so we already discussed about how a you know, visual inspection plant looks like what is involved uh, in terms of collaboration that's involved between a human and a machine take uh, take the decision but still to take the solution to actually take, get it production ready there are lot of other building blocks required to make sure they all work in tandem to make the solution work end to end so it's not just about computer vision identifying the images doing the classification modeling but it's also about 
how do you trigger a camera automatically to do its work how do you trigger shaw floor how do you what all things you need to calculate a result uh, once it's deployed how do you monitor it what's going on with the solution so a lot of other aspects to deploy a solution end to end is also required that needs to be thought through so it's the most challenging work here is about the whole integration which has to be contextualized in the context of problem statement and then share useful and meaningful results that a shop floor can use okay so if, if if i to go go do a little deep dive of what is involved here actually to make this the uh, the plant floor more smarter and improve the oee it's it's all so the whole thing starts with the plc trigger it captures a lot of events the shop floor connector actually processes all the events abstracts the required data gives it to the next processing block here the image processing and this image processing block doesn't handle just one image but several images to make sure it can come up with a good result then it passes on to the whole uh, actual evaluation of these images this is where the actual the whole core ai and different models run to identify the objects correctly and then the next step you have a scene evaluation where you actually recreate a complete scene by taking the relevant images and then the final step the whole calculation step which is very important it's not just about the result but also evaluating the result with respect to various elements in terms of the confidence level the score is it really optimum is the result really making sense and if if once if the confidence level is high and looks good that's when we publish the results back to other systems it could be back to the plc itself to take some actions or to other systems on the shop floor like qm the other business systems or quality management systems so this is kind of a life cycle how to handle a image processing end to end so now i'll hand it over to yashwardhan who will do a deep dive of what is involved on the it side to implement this whole solution thank you very much rajesh ji am i audible yes yeah. so as uh, rajesh ji talked earlier we have seen the rapid pace of artificial intelligence adoption between uh, the manufacturing organizations so there is a pressing need of, because of the business to act faster to reduce the failure rates of the equipments to come up with better outcomes to reduce the cost so prime examples where uh, the ai intervention is required is like for example uh, you are trying to fully automate and uh, uh, reduce the error significantly or uh, like assembly of the correct parts identification of uh, defective sealing seams within an engine identification of missing seals which can call a cause a implosion or a broker or missing pins in a direct injection module so these are the examples which if they are not treated uh, very early in the life cycle they can cause severe problems with the machine itself so they are looking at collaborative vision solutions which can generate accurate and meaningful insights to meet the business trends and customer demands so as the rajesh said it utilizes the artificial intelligence to process and analyze digital images and videos and it is based on the uh, deep learning technique where you take the information you pass you perceive the information models which are contained within the images or videos in a similar way well as a human can see but the computer vision can utilize additional inputs which are available outside a human's uh, audio visual capabilities so deep learning is a new approach which organizations have been trying uh, with a great success and uh, it basically uses uh, example based learning a lot of neural networks to identify the mistakes uh, which could happen or uh, the errors could uh, come our way so they analyze they locate and they classify the object so that they can categorize there is any abnormality in the way the parts are getting manufactured so the organizations are employing automation strategy which leads to uh, efficiency improvement in their internal processes their complex inspection uh, processes so we have proposed this architecture and we have successfully implemented it at number of customers in uh, manufacturing industries automotive industries so it consists of three layers uh, uh, primarily logical layers the one is the periphery layer where uh, there is a core layer and the infra layer all the layers uh, they conform to a principle of interoperability as well as the open standards architecture so the core engine here you see in the diagram is powered by ensemble of uh, cutting edge deep learning technologies uh, which are trained with carefully augmented data sets so it contains uh, open source algorithm it contains proprietary algorithms and also contains sometimes fine tune variants and chained algorithm logic 
and other techniques which help us to get to the results very quickly. So it interprets the events with the video and then visualizes the finding and then automates the response to that event. So we use a very highly uh, scalable and accessible interface to PLC, uh, which can be like the output point from the architecture where you can uh, trigger the in action from the intelli intelligent insights which have been derived by the platform. So the solution will automatically index and store video fragment that ingest the data from the live source. And then it uh, learns from a predefined classes of objects such as equipments or spare parts or additional machinery. So the system can configure alerts if the desired detection or tracking pattern is not match. Uh, so that can identify abnormalities. So typically any architecture uh, using the computer vision will require data ingestion, data pre-processing or multi-processing, training, transfer learning and feature engineering, and sometimes also hyperparameter tuning and the model evaluation. So the data ingestion layer here, it uh, captures the data from multiple sources of inputs, as you can see on the left side, a camera which can give uh, like a streaming image uh, or streaming video collection, external image sources and also the PLC inputs. And so we have used our methodology in a way where it is uh, consistent with the industry standards such as the CRISP DM models. So all the model development, model deployment, and the recalibration is aligned to CRISP, uh, for example. So the performance metrics are also uh, captured in the system. So depending on the use case, depending on the models built, the, we use the machine learning services, as you can see from the top part of the diagram. Uh, there is a object detection pipeline, there is model management systems. So the model system can also go into identifying what is metrics being generated in real time. and uh, also feed into the video en enrichment object so that it can automatically try to tune the model on a periodic basis. So it can be either event-based trigger, it can be time trigger like monthly tuning of the model and the events which form the inputs from the uh, multiple image sources, they also help facilitate the model retweaking, retuning. For example, if there is a seal fault, so based on the location, based on the material use, based on the composition, based on the pressure, Next time it can tune uh, the machine model much quicker and also update the training data. There are several algorithms in the, which can be used in this. So there is AlexNet, there is Google Net, VGG, ResNet, or a CNN model. So we have tried with multiple algorithms and we are also trying to take advantage of specialized hardwares uh, which can be used for computer vision application like gen processing units or uh, GPUs and all. Mm -hmm. So the the backbone of the communication and the various connectors uh, with our architecture is the OPC, which is an open platform communication uh, uh, protocol, which is like a language for communication between different machines in the industry. And there are two models. So we have used the UA model, which is the OPC unified architecture model. It's a cross uh, platform protocol for machine to machine communication. And also sometimes there's a requirement to translate the data coming in from one system for use in the another systems. So, uh, what we have used, uh, this plat connector gives the ability to log different open formats, connect to relational databases, send notifications by SMS, email, or voicemail, and also provides a data historian and alarms an event as well as data action. So this becomes a quite open architecture. And it uh, provides the benefit of having a single solution from embedded to the enterprise, and it builds on the existing investments which organizations would have used in their OPC uh, and uh, uh, COM models. It is also cross-platform and it's uh, internet and firewall friendly and also as a standardized security model. So the security concerns can be added. Now there is also a STOM model which is a uh, interoperable wire format which can communicate with any message broker and that helps us connect to MQTT or Apache Active MQ or Zero MQ for communication with further downstream systems. Can you please move to the next slide? I'll try to speed up a little bit. We have done an extensive comparison based on the weighted uh, 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 scoring between different uh, parts of the machine vision and computer vision. So machine vision is a typically a camera mounted at a uh, manufacturing plant and computer vision is a PC based or a processor based processing where you can take the image in a dim light and enhance it and then utilize it further. So you can do enrichment, you can do aggregation, you can do merging of the images, you can identify pixel boundaries and all. So we prefer computer <coughs> vision which is more of a machine learning approach. So uh, uh, coming to the end, like uh, we see that AI is ready for productionization. So uh, there are there are problems which cannot be solved with the traditional technologies. So typically we uh, 
advise our customer to start with the feasibility study to see what can be reused, what can be the synergy with the legacy systems, and then they can invest in the adoption of machine learning or deep learning models. And this will help them uh, in moving to a very high grade capability like interpreting, moving away from interpreting pixels to moving uh, into analysis of shapes or making the turning the camera on and off uh, to get more accurate images, making it plug and play and improving the production uh, in a way that it leads to more cost saving and continuous improvement can be also uh, incorporated in the model. So this is, uh, we have uh, the organization experience in multiple areas of manufacturing, right from foundry all the way to logistics, and we have implemented solution across all this area, and we are continuously seeking the opportunities to improve in our models and over our offering so that it can solve the real industry problems. Thank you very much. So thank you, thank you both very much uh, for that for that presentation. And the uh, yes, it is time for Q and A. You're perfectly uh, perfectly on time. Um, we've had a, um, some questions coming in, and but uh, they're being answered in the chat in the uh, in this in the same answer, so uh, possibly by a colleague of yours. But um, let me let me pick on one of those, um, and it, it's about um, uh, the second part of it was are you considering 5G? And the answer is that the first plants are going to 5G now, um, uh, but it's still early days uh, in contrast to the marketing buzz. Um, that's something that we that we hear a lot. There's a lot of lot of talk about the 5G, but but um, the real implementations um, at this stage are are few and far between in terms of demonstrable benefit. Um, can you speak a little more about uh, how you how you see uh, or what benefits you would see from from 5G in in this scenario? Okay, so this is now Lucas. So we see benefits uh, if we have to attach the cameras to moving vehicles. So in many uh, applications, we use fixed cameras, for instance, looking at the assembly line. But if you move cameras to, for instance, AGVs, autonomous guided vehicles, then mm -hmm. you don't have the computing power on the device. And then 5G makes absolute sense. You just have a smart camera and everything done else is uh, done in the background. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you, Lucas. And it was you answering in the background. So uh, official yeah, yeah. Ans official answers, we can say they are. Um, <laughs> so um, uh, Rajeshri and, and Yashabadan, you're, you're both uh, uh, architects. I know senior senior ones. Um, but a, a question that we that we get a lot is is where does where does uh, architecture fit in enterprise architecture specifically fit in um, the transformation activities that you're involved in? Um, with your customer, and, and what do you see? Where does architecture fit with in your in your customers? Is there a, is there a typical role or varied? So we see typically there are uh, customers are typically looking at uh, multiple uh, large complex multi tower projects or programs, and there also uh, need to work uh, jointly for harmonization of the initiatives within the organization. Uh, where there are large consumers downstream as well as their legacy systems feeding into uh, uh, like a large program. So mm -hmm. there we see need for enterprise architects more because uh, you need to have a holistic view of how the data models will evolve, what will be the data uh, stewardship, what will be the data governance, what will be the storage network infra architecture, what will be the software architecture, and how does it scale to the demands of technology. For example, I am from big data. so. Technology changes every three months. So how do you create a scalable architecture which will be kind of future proof to maybe next three years? Not maybe right. beyond that because you don't know where the technology will go. So there we see a dire need of enterprise architects. Okay, and I can I can see Lucas is uh, is uh, answering some other questions. Um, I'll get to this one before he does. Um, how okay. how um, can machine to machine communication achieve? Uh, which it's just moved. How can it how can it achieve better autonomy on the shop floor? Basically, hazardous environment, uh, especially in manufacturing and the process industry. So, how how can machine to machine communication um, achieve better autonomy on the shop floor? So, I think it's not only about communication; it's about collaboration. Mm -hmm. And if you want to achieve this, one machine has to make sense of another machine. And this is where we really see a lot of benefit using OPC UA. 
It's right. not only about communication aid, what is the machine capable of doing, and then the machines can interact. So you can you can find out what is what can a machine do and what not. And, and if you are in a hazardous environment, you should know what is doable and what not. Yeah. So this yeah. this is, it's collaboration. That's the key. Not only connectivity. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Well, thank all three of you very much, um, Lukas, for answering the, those those questions and being put on the spot, and Rajeshri and Yashuad, and thank you very much for your uh, for your insight and a, a virtual round of applause from us.